Okay, a few homework examples. Uh, mostly just to introduce you to the notation and the idea. I think you'll be fine once you understand what they're asking. Okay, so let's tackle number two. Uh, so the instructions here say assume that the matrices are partitioned conformably for block multiplication. Which just means assumes the chunks, assume the chunks are the right dimensions. Obviously, if you're trying to multiply a three by three times a four by one, that's not the right dimensions. But they're saying assume that they're chunked up in the right way, that they are partitioned conformably for block multiplication, and then compute the products. Okay, so for something like number two, they're basically just wanting to say, hey, can you still multiply a two by two times a two by two? And instead of numbers, you've got letters, which actually stand for submatrices. We don't know what they are. Uh, but just remind yourself that for this top left corner, first row, first column, you do the first row times the first column. So that would be E times P plus, and that's a zero, zero times R. Uh, when they say zero here, uh, what they mean by that uh, is literally a matrix made up of all zeros. We don't know how big it is. Again, we don't know the size of these blocks. Could be a two by three, could be a thousand by ten million, but it's all zeros, whatever size it is. And we also know it's the right size to multiply by R, whatever R is. And you know what happens when you multiply a matrix of all zeros by any other matrix? You get a matrix of all zeros. And then when you add a matrix of all zeros, to another matrix, you just get that other matrix. So the short story is zero as a matrix works like zero as a number. So zero times R is zero, zero added to EP is just EP. So before I finish, let me just simplify and say that top left corner is gonna end up being EP. Uh, if I wanna do this spot next, first row, second column, EQ plus zero times S. So by the same logic, that's just EQ. Uh, the bottom two spots are going to be zero times P plus F times R. Uh, so again, that's just FR. Be careful with order, by the way. E is on the left and P is on the right when you multiply those two together. And keep in mind, order matters for matrix multiplication. It's not commutative. So E times P is different than P times E, right? So make sure you get E times P. Uh, make sure the matrix that's on the left when you begin is also on the left when you write down the resulting product. Uh, okay, so what's the last one we got here? Um, Second row, second column. So that's 0 times Q, F times S. So just FS. Okay, so there's 2. Done. We know how to do block multiplication. So let's try it again with number 4. And the only other thing I wanted to point out with number 4 is they use one other. They use I, which, big shock. is the identity matrix. Keep in mind identity matrix has all zeros except for ones down the main diagonal. <laughs> so that's, I guess that would technically be I4, right? Uh, that's a four by four identity matrix. But in general, uh, they have ones on the main diagonal, zeros everywhere else. And multiplying an identity matrix by any other matrix just gives that other matrix. It's like one. It's the matrix version of one. So again, when you do your first row times first column here, you get I times W plus zero times Y. And again, to simplify that, I 
times any matrix is just that matrix. And 0 times y, this part zeroes out. So all that simplifies to just the matrix W. Um, likewise, let's see, we'd get here, we'd get ix, uh, not plus. Uh, I'd get ix plus 0z. No, no dot in there. Okay, uh, which simplifies to x. And let's see, this would be negative e w plus y. Uh, technically plus i y, but I'm jumping to the simplified version. And finally, uh, negative e x plus c. Uh, so the nice thing about this homework is you're not having to actually crunch any numbers, unlike my examples in the previous video. Uh, just mucking around with some letters. You get to use your good old-fashioned algebra skills. So really, 2 and 4 are just kind of the warm-up. Where the algebra really comes into it is things like 6 and 8. Uh, so let's look at those. Um, they're saying find formulas for x and y and z. So when we get done with 6, we're going to have a formula that says x equals and y equals and z equals. That's what they're looking for. In terms of a, b, and c, so over here maybe you'll have something like a, c minus b inverse or something. I just made that up. That's not right. But that's the idea of what they're looking for is writing a formula for x in terms of a's and b's and c's. And we have an equation. Um, like most equations that we try to solve, we are going to simplify and then see if we can solve. Uh, so let's do that. Uh, for 5, uh, sorry, let's do 6. You're going to do 5. For 6, uh, the only simplification we can do is multiplying the left-hand side out. So let's, let's see if I can just jump straight to the simplified version here. This will become xA plus 0b, so just xa, xa, and then it would be x0, 0c, so that's actually all just going to be 0. Then we'll have ya plus zb, no simplifications there, ya plus zb, and the last one is y0, so 0, uh, plus zc. And I know that that has to still be equal to the other side, which is identity, 0, 0, identity. Which, by the way, means the entire right-hand side is just one big identity matrix. Just ones all the way down the diagonal. Um, but now, we just have an equation, and like any equation, we say, hey, the only way this side is going to be equal to that side are if the individual entries are equal. So I know that xA must be the identity. And I know that, that 0 must be 0. That's That one's easy. But I also know that yA plus zB has to be 0. And I also know that zC has to be the identity. So I can make use of those four and see what I can come up with. So first of all, xA has to equal the identity. Uh, that means that x, just think about it. You multiply something by a matrix and you get the identity. That's what we mean when we say the inverse. So x has to be A inverse. If you want to be a little more algebraic about it, you can multiply both sides of this um, let's see, we're trying to solve for x, so we're trying to get rid of a. So we can multiply both sides by a inverse. Uh, a times a inverse is the identity. It leaves you with just x. Identity times a inverse is a inverse. <laughs> uh, so x is, whether you do it mechanically like that, or you just look at a times x getting i and say x has to be the inverse. Uh, anyway, uh, x is a inverse. 
let's see what else we can figure out. Uh, zero equals zero, that doesn't tell us a whole lot. Um, I'm gonna jump down to this ZC equals I. Uh, through similar reasoning, that means Z must be the inverse of C. Uh, so now I'm just left with this YA plus ZB equals zero. And I'm trying to get a formula for Y, so let's solve for Y. So YA equals negative. Z, B, you are allowed to subtract matrices. And to finish solving for Y, I would need to do A inverse on both sides. Uh, if you really want to write that out. So Y equals negative Z, B, A inverse. Don't mess with the order. Keep in mind multiplication order is important. Um, and we're almost done because Y needs to be in terms of A, B, and C. I'm not allowed to have a Z over here. Fortunately, I already know that Z is C inverse. So there's my formula for Y. Negative C inverse, B, A inverse. Um, you can do number eight or I could do number eight in a similar manner. It's same idea, so I'm not gonna run through that one. Really, kind of the big thing I wanted you to get out of all of this is just this notation, and also this idea that you can multiply the left side and set it equal to the right side to solve. Okay, let's go ahead and look at one more problem, uh, which is number 10. Uh, number 10 says the inverse of this block partition matrix is that block partition matrix. And they want you to find P, Q, and R. Uh, inverse, of course, means that when you multiply them together, you get the identity. Um, so, oops, let's get it on the right layer. So I'll just say multiplying those two together results in the identity. And since this is a three by three times another three by three, we would get a three by three result over here, an identity sort of in that form looks like this. So now we're back down to the same type of problem as we were with number six, which is just saying multiply out the left-hand side and set it equal to the right-hand side. Uh, so let's start doing that. Uh, first row times first column would be the first row, first column spot. So this spot right here would be I times I, great. Zero times P, zero times Q. So I times I, so top left entry is I, which no big shock, we already knew that. So I is I, that didn't really help me any. Uh, let me go for the um, second row, first column entry. So that would be A, okay, so now we're starting to get some letters in there. That would be A times I, so that's A. plus I times P, so there's P. Uh, see, we're doing second row, first column, okay. And zero times Q, so that's done. Um, and that has to equal zero. So I'm starting to get a little bit of information here. I just found out that A plus P has to equal zero. Okay, let's keep going. Um, uh, third row, first column, will give me B 
plus dp plus d p <laughs> um, plus iq so plus q and I know that has to equal zero as well so that's a little more complicated equation but I do know that b plus dp plus q has to equal zero uh, let's see, they wanted to find P, Q, and R, and when they mean that, they mean just in terms of A, B, C, and D. I should make that clear. Um, hmm, there is no C. So in terms of A, B, and D. Um, but yeah, find a formula that says P equals, find a formula that says Q equals, and R equals, and just have a b's and d's on the other side so p i can do already by the way p apparently is the same thing as negative a q at the moment i could say that it is let's see q i can subtract b and i can subtract d p ah but p is the same thing as negative a Negative times a negative is a positive. So I could say Q is negative B plus DA. Uh, I just have to keep going until I can get some R's involved in there. Enough R's that I can figure out some formula for R. So right, R is in the second column over here. So I think as I start to work out this, I'll start to get some R's involved. And I won't finish that out because this video is getting too long already, but I think you get the idea. Uh, your assignments 1 through 12, as usual, I'm leaving the true false entirely up to you, which is 11 and 12. But we've looked at examples of 1 through 10.